We told you a little while earlier, an entire battalion of security officers, the CRPF, as we told you already, involved in this entire process. We're just going to bring you more, but the political drama, an intense political drama playing out. Uh, Section 144, as we speak, has been put uh, prohibitory orders in place in several areas. Uh, you have a 100-meter radius around multiple locations. This is the chief minister's house. There is a 100-meter prohibitory order there. We're just, we're just going to be silent for a second as you take a look at those visuals. ED officials getting off before they enter into the chief minister's residence. Demonstrations, rallies, meetings, none of that's going to be allowed in any of these areas when the ED team is questioning. Remember, protests took place across the state on Jan 20th during Sorin's questioning by sleuths of the ED at his residence here. The last time this happened, it also took place at his residence. Okay, the car has now entered inside his gates, as you can see. Okay, we'll possibly see that car emerging in a few hours from now. Sometimes, remember, this questioning can, can last anywhere from four to seven hours. We've seen sometimes nine hours too in the past with different chief ministers, different leaders. Okay, the car has entered, as you can see. Okay, let's go back to our, our battery of reporters that are with us right now. Let's go over to our colleague Arunima to understand more. Arunima, could you just paint the scene? What the scene inside uh, Surian's residence possibly looks like right now? For example, is he allowed to have a lawyer with him during this questioning? Can you tell us a little bit more? Um, so let me let me recap for you what happened on January 20th and that will give you a sense of what can be expected this time around. On the 20th of January, when the Enforcement Director team reached Heyman Soren's residence, all the legislators and senior party members were also camped in that same house. And they sat through the seven and a half hours that ED team questioned Heyman Soren. Uh, his supporters were gathering outside the house as well. So there was a, you know, a huge crowd outside which eventually thinned out but yet when the questioning ended at about 7.30, uh, after seven and a half hours, Heyman Sorin came out and he addressed the crowd. So that kind of scene you could have expected today also, except that 100, uh, Section 144 has been imposed. So the crowd outside will not be permitted. Whether the show of strength inside will continue if those members are already inside uh, and whether ED will seek, uh, you know, that, that, they, that they leave, uh, that we have to wait and see for another five minutes. There will be audio and video recording of the questioning that is, that is going on so that no allegation is made of uh, any any uh, you know unlawful uh, behavior by either side so that will be recorded and depending upon what the investigating officer decides uh, we will finally know whether Heman Sorain is a witness in this case or an accused because the notice was sent under section 50 PMLA in which the IO has the power to decide after questioning the status of the person being questioned. Our audiences, we know that last time Sorain complained that none of the questions he was asked were related to the case. Can you tell us more? 17 to 18 questions were put to him and all of them were political in nature, not specific uh, to the crime uh, that uh, he's being accused of. Uh, but the ED obviously didn't agree. They thought uh, that they had put in questions to him based on the evidence that they have gathered. It was called amicable initially. The questioning was amy called amicable initially. But the ED also said that some of the answers uh, of the Chief Minister were evasive in nature. And they just want to carry forward from where they left off. Uh, so if 18 questions were put to him last time about banking transactions, about financial transactions, so they should expect more of those questions, specific questions uh, based on what the other accused have told. Lead. Okay, Arunwa, we'll come back to you and our colleague Anshul to understand more about the case in just a second. Let me just tell our audiences the kind of questions that the ED is likely to ask more about. So, what can the ED ask? Number one, they're likely to confront Sorain on all of the co-accused statements that you're going to see. That's number one. Number two, you're going to see what the co-accused have claimed because the co-accused have claimed that transactions were made at the chief minister's behest. Now, they may also confront Himan Sorain with land and mining scam proof. This is what Arunuma was telling us right now. The chief minister will also be quizzed with bank documents brought in front of him. The lens right now is on certain checks that were recovered from an aide of his, Pankaj Mishra. And the chief minister may be questioned on his entire family's financial records. Okay, to take a deeper dive into this, let's now go over to our colleague Anshul, who's also covering the ED aspect of this story. Uh, Anshul, can you tell our audiences, 14 other arrests have taken place in this case, including that of an IS officer last year. Who are these 14 arrests? Do they form Heyman Surin's network? What's the context there? 
Uh, so yes, the investigation. Remember, this investigation initially started in uh, uh, October 2022, and since then the ED has continuously been uh, investigating this entire matter. And as you rightly mentioned, 14 people have been taken into custody. Many of these people actually belong to the department through which uh, these uh, these uh, ownership of land transfer had ha uh, had happened as well. And there are accusations that. Uh, there are accusations in place as well that this land was uh, transferred to people who were close uh, to the family of of Heman Surin as well. So yes, uh, many people have already been arrested. Their statements have have been recorded, and these people, some of them, are said to be close confidants and very very close of the Jharkhand Chief Minister as well. And that is the reason why where the name of Jharkhand CM has come into this entire investigation that is being carried out by the Info Enforcement Directorate, and hence it becomes very very necessary for the Jharkhand uh, CM to go ahead and refute. Uh, these allegations that have been put forth, or the name uh, that has that his name has been taken by several of the accused and people who have already been arrested uh, by the investigating agency as well. So yes, that is the biggest challenge in front of Heman Surin uh, as we speak today. He has to refute all these allegations. He has to uh, he has to come up with uh, with uh, with answers that are actually believable for the investigating agency at, at this point in time because yes uh, definitely as I, I have been mentioning that after the turn of events that happened over the last two days definitely the enforcement directorate is building its case very very uh, very very strongly and troubles for the Jharkhand chief minister is increasing what will happen today that is, that still remains to be seen but yes uh, the manner in which the investigation has gone on the people have been arrested name statements have been have been recorded in this entire matter as well so yes definitely the okay. heat is is turning on uh, if Heman Surin will come out safely peacefully from it that is something that remains to be seen okay let's go over now to our colleague Saurav just to check in on the the political uh, scenario here sort of two questions for you has the JMM RJD Congress Alliance stood strong through all of this over the last few months and question number two the BJP that does have a very strong presence in Jharkhand their vote share was higher than the JMM's for example in the last elections what's been going on in the Babulal Mirandi BJP camp can you tell us more See, right uh, when when uh, Hemant Surain was uh, untraceable uh, two days back and he was uh, completely missing for two days, uh, the the attack uh, by the BJP, uh, especially uh, Jharkhand BJP chief uh, Babulan Mandi had posted uh, uh, one tweet on uh, social media X saying that those uh, those who can find uh, Hemant Surain who was in a white shirt, black pant, and a slipper would get uh, rupees eleven thousand as a reward. And then uh, you know the attack came from BJP MP from Gorda Nishikan Dubey. He said that uh, Hemant Surain is uh, you know uh, he is following the footsteps of his father when shibu surain was uh, union minister he he was untraceable for 21 days so uh, heman surain has been uh, you know uh, targeted by the B uh, bihar bjp in fact uh, after these uh, tweets and statements uh, the jmm took it uh, derogatory and uh, they, they had said that they can file a defamation case against these leaders uh, but uh, soon after we saw uh, baulal mandi giving uh, uh, media the sound bite saying that uh, heman surain is a coward and uh, because he is not trustworthy, uh, how can uh, if he can't uh, you know uh, save himself? How can he save the uh, people of uh, the, uh, of Jharkhand? Uh, but uh, on the other hand, we see Jharkhand uh, leaders, Jharkhand uh, JMM leaders. They have been saying that uh, it's BJP who doesn't want a, a minister who is a tribal uh, chief minister. They are anti-tribals and they don't want um, you know a leader who is who comes from a tribal community to uh, to head the state. So uh, JMM accusing BJP of being anti-tribal now. Uh, BJP they are saying that the chief minister is a coward but uh, the whole politics revolves around uh, the number of seats uh, which are there uh, in Jharkhand. Uh, total 81 seats are there uh, Toya, uh, but uh, one seat is being uh, vacant and it is said that it is speculated that that seat uh, which was vacated by uh, you know JMM MLA Mr. Ahmed uh, is for uh, 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 is for Kalpana Surin if uh, the case may arise. Uh, mm. So in 80 uh, we, we see that uh, BJP that is the NDA they have a support of 30 MLAs altogether. If we count uh, one more uh, independent MLA, so they have 31. Uh, but rest of the 49 MLAs, they are strongly uh, supporting the UPA government, uh, and that includes uh, JVM, JMM, RJD, and uh, you know NC as well. So uh, these parties are uh, they they had the presence there in the uh, CM residence yesterday. Also, they they had uh, uh, si uh, signed on the letter of support uh, to the chief minister and every leader. Uh, those who were coming out of uh, the CM residence yesterday, they said that they are with Heman Surin and uh, whatever decision is taken by Heman Surin, they are going to follow that. So clearly, uh, the path for uh, 
GMM led UPA government is uh, clear as far as numbers are concerned and uh, as far as leader of uh, you know of the legislature party there in Jharkhand is concerned uh, you know uh, Kalpana Surain can be a face of uh, CM if uh, today something uh, uh, happens to Hemant Surain if he is uh, you know taken into custody or he has to vacate his seat then uh, a seat is there and uh, the face is there so the seat of Gandhi which was vacated by Mr. Ahmed Jemim MLA he had resigned from uh, the post of MLA and then the seat was vacated uh, remember Gandhi seat is a, a, a unreserved seat and uh, uh, Kalpana Surain comes from Odisha so she can't contest on a reserved seat in uh, tribal state of Jharkhand so uh, it is speculated highly that uh, that particular seat which is unreserved was vacated uh, just to just in case Ahmed Surain is taken into custody then uh, Kalpana Surain can contest from that particular seat. Can you also sort of quickly tell us, uh, Sita Surin, how much of a hold does she have in the JMM? The fact that she's come out and said that she doesn't agree with Kalpana Surin being there. Uh, is Kalpana Surin and Himan Surin's hold so strong that we perhaps shouldn't pay heed to her words? Bring us context. I see, Sita Surin is, uh, you know, the sister-in-law of Hemant Surin. She is, uh, uh, you know, a widow, and she uh, was a wife of uh, uh, of uh, Durga Surin, who was the elder son of uh, Hemant Surin. And she has been saying that uh, because uh, Durga Surin and uh, Shibu Surin together made JMM and together uh, took the party to this level, so she has all the right, uh, you know, uh, over the party. Uh, and uh, and she has been contesting election uh, since 2009, and she has been an MLA. Uh, in the uh, in the JMM led uh, UPA government uh, since 2009, so uh, it's it's a, a very you know she's she's claiming that Kalpana Surin has never been into politics. She has never taken in any interest in any kind of uh, political uh, you know work uh, within right. the party. So all of a sudden she has been projected. And uh, yesterday she was in fact when Kalpana Surin took part in the meeting that took place at CM residence, it was the first time she was seen uh, sitting with the legislators when such kind of meeting was taking place so sita surin and uh, you know hemant surin both uh, in fact sita surin is saying that it is because of the fear of hemant surin uh, many yes. mlas who are supporting her uh, they are not uh, speaking uh, anything uh, you know uh, outside so clearly okay. there is a rift between on exactly this aspect i just want to share with our audiences some breaking news let's go over to it right now we're learning about inside sources